am thrilled for us to begin this new worship series. I hope that if you have not yet picked up an atlas, they look like this, that you'll pick one up on the way out. You can pick one up for a friend as well. It talks about the whole series of Grateful. It talks about the different psalms that we're going to be reading together. It talks about ways, other books that you might want to read. We're going to be looking at Diana Butler Bass's book called Grateful. And so I hope that you'll pick this up on your way out today if you have not yet received one or pick one up for a friend and invite them to come to worship with you. And now, may we go to God with grateful hearts to prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, inspire us with your true and lively word that we may know more of what it means to be your children and that we may faithfully respond to the call of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ the one in whose name we've gathered, and the one in whose name we pray this day. Amen. So before there were lightning monitors that were out on fields, which got used a lot this past week on soccer fields and football fields and everywhere else, I grew up learning that you could tell the distance between the lightning and the thunder by the gap in the middle. If you counted, if you counted from the time that you saw the lightning and the thunder, that you count five seconds, and for every five seconds, it was a mile away. You ever do that? You ever have that sense in which you sort of knew how far it was, and when they came really close together, you knew it was really close by? Carl Barth, a theologian, once said, that gratitude follows grace, just like thunder follows lightning. Gratitude follows grace, just like thunder follows lightning. And yet, there's that gap in between. That gap between the energy of the lightning and the low, rumbling thunder. And we heard that a lot this past week, didn't we? We talk a lot about God's grace, God's unmerited favor, and yet too often there is a great gap between God's grace that is poured out on us and our response of gratitude. Diana Butler Bass talks about that gap, and she says, the gap is between our desire to be grateful and our ability to behave gratefully a divide that influences our understanding of morality, worship, and institutional religion itself. In other words, God's grace often strikes over and over again, and we are slow to respond, to respond with that sense of gratitude. It reminds me of the story in Luke 17. I don't know if you remember it, but there were 10 lepers, 10 people dealing with this horrible disease of leprosy, and Jesus heals them. And all 10 run off to the priests to show themselves, but only one, only one returns to give thanks. And you ponder, were the other nine not grateful Or was their response just so slow that by that time Jesus had already moved on? What about you today? How quick is your response? And and why do we have that great gap between God's grace that pours out on us and our ability to respond with gratitude and thanksgiving? I think that part of the reason that we have that huge gap in between is because we we too often are busy grasping for something else. Even when we have blessings right before us, we continue to think that we need more, that we're looking for something else. We look beyond the very blessings that are in front of us, thinking that there is something else out there that we've got to attain or grasp. There's an interesting 
phrase that we use sometimes. It's called grasping for straws. Have you heard that phrase? Do you know where it comes from? It actually originally was used by Sir Moore, and he basically, I'm going to get it, Sir Thomas Moore, and it basically was the understanding that someone was drowning in water and how they would grasp at anything and they would grasp at even the straw on the side at the edge of the water. Straw that couldn't hold them, straw that couldn't pull them up. And yet that's what they would grasp for. How often are we drowning in our very midst of the things that we think are going to give us a sense of happiness or a sense of feeling better about ourselves, a sense of worth, and yet all we are doing is grasping for that which is never going to even be able to lift us up out of that which we are drowning from. Are we willing? Are we willing to realize that many of the blessings that we need in our lives are already right before us. But all too often, we look beyond them. And I think that speaks to this whole understanding that what happens is we put on a lens uh, way too often. I don't know. I see it all the time in social media and everywhere else. We have a great lens for griping about things, don't we? Yeah? So not only are we grasping for something beyond what we already have, but we have a great lens for griping. What I need to tell you is this morning was that, you know, I love when I have written a sermon and I've put it together and then um, I realize that it's more towards me than it is towards anybody else. And that was sort of this morning. This morning, it seemed like that from the time I woke up all the way through, something kept going not quite the way I anticipated it going. And the whole time I kept thinking, We're talking about being grateful today. And yet the whole time, it was really easy for me to sink into some griping. You know, things weren't just going right. What lens do we put on? How do we live into that? Because too often what we've gotten into, and Diana Butler Bass talks about this, as we get into that understanding that that gratitude is about reciprocity. We think that we only extend gratitude when we have received something. And so it too often what happens is it is truly like thunder that follows lightning because we wait till the lightning strikes and then say, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be thankful. We think it's only at that point that we respond with gratitude. We wait for circumstances to change. We wait for something bigger or better, and then we respond with gratitude rather than putting on the lens of gratitude in the first place. There's a rabbi who has written a book called Why Faith Matters. His name is Rabbi David Walp. He had brain cancer and lymphoma. And in his book, he says, Throughout my various illnesses, I prayed. My prayer was not answered because I lived. My prayer was answered because I felt better able to cope with my sickness. Each time I go for my regular test, the CT or PET scans, or an MRI, each time I am moved into the metal tube that will give me an image of sickness or health, I pray. And I do not pray because I believe God will give me a clear scan. I pray because I know then that I'm not alone. And from gratitude that having been near death, I am still in life. I pray not for magic, but for closeness. Not for miracles, but for the depth of love that I feel in that moment. It's easy for us to get caught up in thinking that gratitude is all about circumstances. And yet, in our psalm today, our psalm that is credited to David in the later years of his life, 
we need to know that David, y'all, David had been through some trials. Yes, he was king, but he had also, he had gone through some great temptations in his life, and some of those he didn't deal with so well. He, he looked out and he saw a woman that he wanted And he not only committed adultery in that time period, but he had her husband killed. David. David, who we say is part of the lineage of Jesus. David, who struggled with circumstances, who faced the death of a child. David. David, who had as many human characteristics as you and as me and struggled in the midst of all of that, and now towards the end of his life, lifts up this psalm of thanksgiving. A psalm that in the midst of the moment says at verse 3, On the day I cried out, you answered me. You answered me. And then it says in the CEB translation, you encouraged me with inner strength. It doesn't say you changed all the circumstances so everything was perfect. It says, God, you encouraged me with inner strength. Inner strength so that then I could see things differently. Inner strength that hopefully helped me to put on a different lens by which to view the world. Not a lens of things that needed to be grasped, grasped, or not a lens of things that were difficult or that were bad or that weren't the way I wanted them to be, but a lens of gratitude. I read an analogy this week, and it was on somebody's Facebook post, and it was an analogy about somebody who was carrying a cup of coffee, and somebody bumped into them. And when they got bumped into, they spilled their coffee. And the question was, why did you spill your coffee? And the first response was, was because somebody bumped into me. That's why I spilled my coffee. And then the analogy goes on to say, That's the wrong answer. It's not just about somebody bumping into you. The answer is really that you spilled your coffee because you had coffee in the cup. That's what you had in your cup. If you'd had tea in your cup, you would have spilled tea. If you'd had water, you would have spilled water. If you'd had milk, you would have spilled milk, but instead you had coffee, and so that's what you spilled. Okay, so let's think about that. What do we carry around so that when we get bumped in life, when we get rattled by things, when things aren't going the way and we get to where things pour out from us, what do we pour out? When I get bumped in life, when things aren't going the way I think they should, when I get trampled on or what's pouring out from me? What's in my cup? Is it harsh words? Is it anger? Is it immediately frustration? Is it the words of griping? Or is it what pours out from me is gratitude or forgiveness or patience or even joy? When we get bumped by life, when we get bruised by life, which we will, all of us, what we have put in our cups, what we have filled ourselves up with, y'all, that's what gets poured out. What are you carrying in your cup today? So how do we move from the grasping and the griping to gratitude. And y'all, I need to tell you that it's not just about, I don't know, how many of you, when you received gifts when you were young, your parents made you sit down and write thank you notes and list, yeah, and you never knew what to write, and it was always a struggle, and you felt like it was this obligation, and I need to sit down and do this, and it's a hard thing to do, and it's, 
takes time and I just want to play with the toy that I have and not do that gratitude thing. Y'all, too often what happens in the midst of this is that we begin to feel like that it's all about obligation. I hope today that you coming to worship didn't feel like an obligation. I hope that today you didn't get up and go, well, you know, that good thing happened this week, so I need to go to worship and I need to tell God thank you. I need to tell you that that's not how it works. God pours out God's grace on us, unmerited favor, and God then invites us into the fullness of relationship with him each and every day. God doesn't want it to feel like an obligation. God gives us the Psalms, and I encourage you to read the Psalms. Pick different ones over the course of the next couple of weeks, and sometimes, y'all, they're not so happy. Sometimes the people are really struggling. But the mindfulness is that all of them, all of them acknowledge God's presence in the midst of either the great joy or the great struggle. And that's how we move to gratitude. We move into that lens of gratitude by recognizing that we have to not deal with it in terms of it just being a response to the things that have happened, but rather an anticipation about God being present with us all the time. In 138, 7 through 8, it says, Whenever I'm in deep trouble, God, you will make me live again. You will send your power against my enemy's wrath. You will save me with your strong hand. The Lord will do all of this for my sake. Your faithful love lasts forever, Lord. Do you hear it? It's not just about what God has done. It's the anticipation about what God will do. It reminded me so much, back in Genesis 28, when Jacob is struggling, he's stolen his brother's blessing and he's bought his birthright through some really not great means. Jacob is on this journey and Jacob lives in that midst of that reciprocity, that feeling of, and his prayer to God is, if God is with me and protects me on this trip I'm taking and gives me bread to eat and clothes to wear and I return safely to my father's house, then the Lord will be my God. And then I will give a tenth back to you, O God. Do you hear it? If God will do these things, then, then God, I'm going to worship you. Y'all, that's not the way God wants it. God's pouring out God's grace on us all the time. Too often we just don't have the lens to see it. How are we responding with gratitude? In the midst of whatever our circumstance is, with anticipation of how God will continue to walk with us through the highs and the lows, through the joys and through those struggles of life. I was intrigued. I had picked up a um, quote that I wanted to share with you. It just so happens that the one that I pulled from the internet, it didn't even connect with me. It's the one on the gratitude box I shared with the kids. It's from... Wendy Beatty, she's an author. Gratitudes unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos into clarity, problems into gifts, failures into success, the unexpected into perfect timing and mistakes into important events. Gratitude makes sense of our past brings peace for today, and creates vision for tomorrow. Gratitude. When we have that as our lens, it changes everything. But may it not just be a response to what has happened, but may gratitude become a way of life that then opens us with anticipation about all that God will do. You know, lightning is a powerful force. It's interesting that the discovery of electricity came through lightning. But it only came because Ben Franklin 
anticipated that the lightning would come in the storm. Anticipated it enough that he was willing to go fly a kite. What a gift that was. Carl Bart talked about that gratitude follows grace. Just like thunder follows lightning. If we think about that, how well are we living into the thunderous opportunity of gratefulness today? What noise of gratefulness are you making? Is it a really slow, low thunder that hardly anybody can hear? Or is it an ongoing proclamation of God's goodness? Regardless of the circumstances, that God is present with us at all times, in all places. What's the distance today between God's grace and your gratitude? I know that it's something that I continue to try to put on a new lens for. And one of the ways that I'm going to choose to do that is to make a commitment at least during this next four weeks to spend a little more time focused on my blessings rather than grasping or griping about the circumstances that I may be facing. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, may we open our hearts to gratitude. Not because of specific circumstances, but God, because you bless us each and every day. We just need to put the right lens on to see it. In Christ's name. Amen.